whole song, but a goodie. If you have your Bibles today, open with me, please, to Deuteronomy. It might say Deuteronomy. That's a funny word, isn't it? Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 15 through 19. It's good to see you all today. I'm glad that you're here. To a series starting today. I don't know how long it'll take me. I'm still working on this series, but I'm kind of excited about it. And I uh, hope that you'll be blessed from the words that the Lord's given me that I want to share with you with great expectation. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that thou mayest live and multiply. Do good to go back and read that later on. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away so that thou wilt not hear, but shalt be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, neither thou passest over the Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. So basically, what God is saying is it's up to you. Here it is. This is what I want for you. This is the vote that I'm casting in your favor. I want to preach a message entitled for the next several Sunday mornings entitled, Give Me a Moment. In 1988, Whitney Houston, which in my opinion, and I know opinions are like noses, everybody's got one, Probably one of the greatest female vocalists ever lived, especially in pop music. But she debuted her song, Give Me One Moment in Time. She happened to sing that song, 1988 in July, in Seoul, Korea, when the Summer, Summer Olympics main event began. The song was entitled to be a ballad. And in that song, Whitney Houston is mustering up the faith to say, I'm looking for one moment in a day when energy will be thrown in my direction that I will be able to make my mark and be the very best that I can be in that one moment in time. And she basically stresses this point. All it takes is a moment. In fact, history is filled in the field of athleticism those who were counted out. You didn't think that they would measure up. They were outsized, outexperienced. Everything was stacked against them. But through absolute perseverance and willpower and one moment in the competition... Everything changed drastically in their favor and they became the most come out of nowhere Cinderella story and become the champion of all time for that moment. Now I believe with all my heart that God is saying into us in Deuteronomy 30, I'm giving you a moment at some point in your life where you're going to have to make a decision. And your ability to pivot in that moment your ability to follow my spirit, your ability to step into the anointing that I'm arranging to come into your life, to cross your paths, to come up into your life and help you become the person that I have designed you to be in your destiny. 
I believe that there are times when God orders a shift for every believer who are faithful. I believe if you're faithful, I believe if you're obedient to God, I believe if you're serving God with due diligence and with all of your heart, I believe that you can expect heaven any moment now to just cause things to shift. Now what I mean by that is God says, I want to give them some favor for a moment. I want them, I want things to swing in their favor. Doesn't look good right now the way they're doing. They got their nose against the grinding stone and the harder they work, the behinder they get. If that makes sense, I know it certainly does for me. The more I do, the more I've got to do. The more I try to fix it, the more I've got to fix it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? But I believe that God's sending us a moment. And if I've ever believed anything, I believe word of life is worthy of a moment. I've already talked to people this week who have said, and Deb received a phone call yesterday and said, since we started the 21-day fast, my arthritis has not bothered me and I have been the best I have been in years. God is doing things behind the scenes. God is causing people who had a stroke to be able to talk again. God is calling, causing people, and I'm not talking about Rodney, I'm talking about Rodney's, or Sandy's, Rodney's wife's aunt who said to her brother yesterday afternoon, go home. Listen to me, God's moving, God's blessing, God's touching and God wants to give this church a moment. We have been faithful. We've been waiting on God. We've been serving God with a purpose. We have got our mind made up and we've made our face like a flint. I just feel like it's our time to dance. Would somebody say amen in this house? God has a plan. And I fully believe that every single believer, you cannot be a believer without being a part of God's master plan. I think if anybody does dissect us so well and where we are in the plan of God in the church the apostle Paul did when he talks about every one of us being different in our membership and what we are able to contribute but every single one of us are unique and significant and important in the body of Jesus Christ amen somebody the most important part of God's plan is often waited to be manifested when we're going through the most stringent times of our lives when we're facing the most extreme pressure of our life. So, so much of our breakthrough is hanging on you. So much of what is going to happen in your life is determined by the decision you will make. God said to the children of Israel, they had not crossed over into Jordan yet. They haven't even successfully, successfully made it through the wilderness yet. But God was saying, it's coming. There's a door that's going to be open. In fact, there's going to be two doors. You can stay here and you can wind the blues and say, we've been wandering for 40 years, but I want you to know I have provided a door for you. And if you'll go through the door that I have chosen for you, you're going to have one of life and, life and blessing. You see, sometimes we think, well, I just can't do what God tells me to do. Jesus or God told the Apostle Paul when he thought that God, what God was allowing him or sending him through was too much for him and he asked the Lord to remove it talking about the thorn in his flesh it was God who said to the apostle Paul I want you to know something my strength my strength everybody say his strength everybody say his strength God said to the apostle Paul I want you to know son my strength is made perfect in your weakness when I am weak he is strong when I am confused, he has wisdom. When I'm struggling, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. When I don't know where to go, I know that he already sees the path that I need to take. Uh, David said, or Joel, Job said, the Lord knoweth the path or the way that I take. Uh, but God said to Jeremiah, before you were even born, I saw you as nothing but a seed in your mother's womb and I called you to be a prophet and ordained you to preach the gospel. God sees us before he, we see him and he's already moving in our lives to cause a moment of breakthrough to take place for all of us. Your breakthrough moment depends 
on you being able to pivot. You being able to move in a moment. You being able to swing in the direction that the Spirit is leading you. You being able to hear the voice of God when He speaks tenderly yet powerfully and you know that you know that you know this is God. We all have those moments. But the problem is if you and I are not aligned with God, we're just going to miss our moment. If you're not praying, you're going to miss your moment. If you're not praying, you're going to miss your breakthrough. If you're not praying, you're going to miss your healing. If you're not praying, you're going to miss seeing your family coming together. If you're not praying, you're not going to know which career move you need to make next. If you're not praying, you're not going to know who you're supposed to marry or who you're supposed to date or who you're supposed to get in that car with or where you're supposed to go next or which road you need to drive this morning. I want to tell you, you can get so routine that God will try to speak to you and say, I don't want you to go that way today. I want you to go this way. Don't stand and argue with God. Go in the direction God's leading you because he's trying to bring you to a moment that will change your life forever. The whole deal about moments in our lives depends on your relationship with God. Someone told me a little while ago, says, well, you know, God doesn't talk to me. And before I knew it, I opened my big mouth and I said, well, it's your fault. Hello? God talks to me. God talks to my spirit. No, I'm not crazy. I don't hear a voice. But His Spirit is inside of me. I have yielded my Spirit that gives me being. I have yielded my Spirit, body, soul, and Spirit. I have a mind, and that's the filter. That's the one that determines what I'm going to do, who I'm going to listen to, which direction I'm going to go in, what my convictions will be, what is sacred to me. I make up that. I make those decisions right here. But once I make that decision and, it, and I allow it to pass into my body, it lodges right here in my spirit, man. And if Jesus is sitting on the throne of my spirit, I want you to know when God wants to send me a message, a message, Holy Ghost just deposits it in my spirit and I know I've got a feeling everything is going to turn out alright because the spirit of the living God on the inside of me. Somebody praise God. There are those moments when every believer is going to have a turning point in their life. Amen. When you have a turning point, God. Everybody say God. When you have a turning point, God causes everything to change. Hello? Sometimes we, we come to that moment and we don't recognize God. I've, I've been there. I've had to back up. I've had to just get my mind off of being busy and just wait for God to speak to me personally as an individual. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Sometimes things happen in my life that are disappointing. And I'm realizing the older I get, the disappointing things that really get in my spirit. I don't know if this is going to make sense to, to the younger generation. But the older I get, the more I realize when something disappointing is happening and I'm not worthy of that disappointment because my life is in line and my relationship is intact. But there's something going on that's disturbing to me. I stop and I thought, okay, God, you've closed this door. What door are you trying to open and why can't I see it? Because if that door is closed, I ought to know by now because your spirit is on the inside of me. I ought to know by now what direction. Listen, the Bible says that the the, 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 the Lord the guides the steps of a righteous person. Amen, somebody. It's a cliche. When one door closes, another door opens. Amen? So write this down. And remember, the rest of your life, God sends certain moments in your life. Can be a song on the radio. Can be someone walking by. 
could be some, a gesture that they do. could be something in their life significant that gets your attention and demands allegiance for a moment to see who is that person, what was that all about, and was that a particular message. Now, I'm not talking about everything. I'm not talking about just because a cow flaps a fly off its back that that's a word from God. Listen to me. That's too many beans uh, for supper before you go to bread. I, but bed, I believe that God has a moment when he will try to get you to realize I'm in the midst of your life and something is happening here and I'm sending my power to give you direction in your life. Don't miss your moment. And I believe there are certain moments. I believe there are certain events. For the first several couple of decades as a young minister I tried to play God. People would say why did this happen? And I thought, well, I'm a pastor. I'm supposed to have the answer to why it happened. I don't know why it happened. But I do know this now. I do know that, they, that God will send certain events into your life. Amen? And I've told you this because it's one of my favorite things to say. Joseph said to his brothers, if you hadn't have sold me to the Ishmaelites, I wouldn't have gone into Egypt. If I hadn't gone into Egypt, I wouldn't have been put on the slave auction block. If I hadn't been put on the slave auction block, Potiphar hadn't bought me. If Potiphar hadn't bought me, I wouldn't have gone to his house. And if I hadn't gone in his house, his wife would not have attempted me attempted to rape me and to lie falsely. And if she hadn't lied falsely against me, I wouldn't have gone to prison. If I hadn't gone to prison, I wouldn't have been able to tell the dreams of the butler and the baker. If I hadn't have told the dreams of the butler and the baker, the baker wouldn't have been able to tell the king, there's one in the jail that can tell your dream. And if he hadn't told that, I'd never come before Pharaoh. And if I'd never come before Pharaoh, I'd never been able to interpret his dream. If I'd never interpreted his dream, I would have Ever been overseer over all the food that was to come in for the next 14 years and if I hadn't done that there wouldn't have been corn or bread in Egypt and if there hadn't been corn or bread in Egypt you'd have never come down there you meant this for evil but God turned it into good God sends moments God sends events and then of course God sends certain people I thank God for the people that are in my life that occasionally will just text or check on me and say, are you okay? I appreciate who you are. I appreciate what you're doing. I want to tell you something. And it's right what I needed to hear. It's right where I am and I haven't quite got the, found the piece that fits into that puzzle that gives me the picture yet. God sends certain peoples in your life at certain events and certain moments to do certain things that will cause you to see God and will help you from missing your moment that God's sending. Amen? God wants to connect us with our moment. You see, you're the, you're the hinge. You're, you're the one that has to pivot. God says, I've given you a decision. I've placed this in front of you. You're not necessarily going to receive it. It's there if you want it. If you want it, you have to receive it. You won't have to beg me for it. You won't have to search night and day and struggle. You won't even have to fast about this. All you got to do is receive what I have placed in front of you. And church, I want to tell you something this morning. Jesus said it's necessary for you that I go away because if I don't go, the comforter who is the Holy Ghost, he won't come. He's right here in this room. Some of you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You don't have to beg for it. It's there. It's a door you walk in. You have to make up your mind. I want all that God's got for my spiritual well-being. Amen. Now give him a clap offering of praise. When those moments come in your life, they make all the difference. Now my question to you this morning is are you ready? Are you ready for your next or first anointed moment? Are you ready 
because I believe that God is arranging a divine appointment of the supernatural today, right now in your life, somewhere this week. It may be a moment. It may be an event. It may be somebody. It may be a group. It may be a song. I don't know what it's going to be, but I believe heaven's up to something. My question is, are you ready for God? I woke up this morning, the first thing I thought was, God, I hope you are arranging today an opportunity for me. Does that make sense to you? What are you talking about? Well, here, here you go. Are you ready for your jury code to crumble? Are you ready to get a good report that that cancer is in remission? Are you ready for your doctor to say, I don't think you need to take diabetic medicine anymore are you ready for say your high blood pressure is gone you don't have to have the pills anymore are you ready for God to just heal your eyes are you ready for God to fix everything that's going wrong in your life Amen. Are you ready for a career move like you never dreamed was possible because you don't have the education, you don't have the experience, you don't have the years, you don't have the people that can open the door? Are you ready for God to arrange an opportunity in your life that will change your life forever? Don't miss it. That's why he's going to send a moment. That's why he's going to send an event. That's why he's going to send people in your life that will say, hey, did you know that God is moving right now in your life? Oh, Elisha was so ahead of all that. When he got to Gilgal, those prophets who were prophesying to themselves and not to the world, they went up to Elisha and said, Did you know that your master is going to be taken up from you today? Now, the King James Version says, I know it. Hold thy peace. Now, I'm not going to tell you what the real translation was. Yeah, I will. Shut up. Don't you think I know that already? Because I am in line. I am in the relationship. Listen to me. When God touches you and when God's about to touch you, nobody has to pull your coattail and say, hey, God's about to move. You know it! Because you're connected to your moment. Are you ready for your Jericho to crumble? Are you ready that thing for that thing that has been just absolutely an annoyance to you all of your life? Are you ready for that thing to be gone and for the door of opportunity to be opened in your life? It was in the 1950s. The Cold War was escalating. They'd just come through World War II. Hitler, the Germans were silenced. Korean War was going on and no one knew who was siding with Korea. And so the Cold War, the threats of Russia coming in and doing all the violence that they're doing right now to Kuwait and surrounding countries. President Eisenhower was a frequent guest of the Greenbrier Hotel in West Virginia. And Mr. Eisenhower decided that he wanted to build a bunker and that bunker, which was four hours away from, or Greenbrier Hotel, which was in West Virginia, was four hours away from the White House. He decided, okay, I want to build a bunker here so that when the Cold War, if it does escalate and we go into war again, I will have a place to basically hide out in secrecy, not just me, but all of Congress if I have to. And so he proceeds to make the Greenbrier Hotel in West Virginia, the U.S. nuclear fallout defense shelter for all of those who are in politics and who are absolutely essential to the United States of America's well-being. And in that bunker, it, they would be able to hide out there and they would be able to stay there for two years if necessary. After all the fallout was over, then they would come out and they would rebuild America. I actually, when I, before I came here, I started up a food ministry in Colorado Springs, uh, Colorado. Colorado Springs out actually has 30% of the world's government working in that one city. 
in a part of Colorado Springs, they have the fallout shelter that was for folks in the west out there or Midwest. They could go there. Deb and I actually went up. We couldn't go in, but this humongous place hewn out of the mountain, they say that everybody there in the Midwest and on to the west could stay there for two years should they need to be housed and taken care of to take care of the policies and the governments of the United States of America. But President Eisenhower, when he was building this or having this built, uh, he had three major accesses to the Greenbrier Hotel. And those accesses had to be fortified to the, degree, to the degree that it would withstand any kind of attack of a bomb being dropped upon that place if the secrecy was ever let out and be made known where the president and where all the United States government officials were holding up until the war was over. So he put three massive doors at each entrance into the Greenbrier Hotel. Each door was 15 feet high and 13 feet wide. It was 20 inches thick and each door weighed 25 tons. Each door had to have specific location as to where the hinge. The hinge had to be built in a certain way that each hinge would support one and a half ton. We're talking about 50,000 pounds. But it also had to be constructed and built and hung in such a way that only only one person could open the doors. You, you've got a 50,000 pound steel, solid steel door, 20 inches thick, 15 feet high, 13 feet wide, could be opened with 50 pounds of pressure. Listen to me. Unless they had something that would work with that unique design, it would just be a room that's enclosed that nobody could come in and go out of. It would be sealed up. You didn't have access. God says, I have in my, I have in my reserve everything. If you need healing, I can do that. If you need deliverance, I can do that. If you need a breakthrough, I can do that. If you need to be rescued from a situation I can do that. If you're going through a storm, I can bring you out. But I just want you to know you're the hinge. And if you want out, you've got to make a decision. I'm going to go with God. Give me one moment in time and break through his mind. All of us experience breakthrough moments. All you have to do is be ready. Our job is to keep our spirit in tune with God's spirit. There are several occasions I could give you that are so awesome to me. Abraham messed up. He listened to his wife. I thought I'd get a laugh out of that. Maybe God wants you to go in. He went in. He slept with Hagar, had a baby. God didn't speak to him for 14 years. 14 years. Because he listened to a third party. He listened to something that wasn't in consent with his will. You see, that's where we mess up. We get going in the right direction. We hear the plan of God. We feel the Spirit of God when we hear the plan of God. The anointing of God shakes us and quakes us and moves us in our bootstraps. And we know we've heard from God. But then there is this time that delays between the time God speaks and the time actually God moves. There is this wonderment that we go through and Satan loves to get in our mind and say, well, maybe you misunderstood God. Maybe Listen, the devil... You wait. Watch this. You get sick in your body. You come up. You ask for prayer. You get prayed for. You feel like you're delivered. You go home. Then after the service is over, the devil will tell you, you didn't get healed. He's not telling you you're sick while you're sick. He knows faith has just set you apart from the disease and the demon that brought the sickness on your body. What he's afraid of is now you're going to stand up tall and take God in his word when he says, by his stripes ye are healed. Are you going to believe God or are you going to believe what the devil is whispering in your ear I choose to believe the reports of the Lord you see we got to keep our attitude in line with God's word we got to be prepared when our moment comes amen because you are the hinge to life the door can swing either in a good direction or he can swing into bad. God's not forcing any of us to live for him. 
He gave you a good, he gave you a free will. You can go to hell if you want to. Now, I don't mean that to be derogatory. God's not forcing anybody to go to heaven. He also said, though, in 1 Peter, it's not my will that any should perish. So he certainly doesn't want you to go to hell. God has already cast his vote in your favor to be well, to have breakthrough, to have a miracle, to be filled with joy. He said in 1 John 3, it's my desire that you be in good health and prosper in all things, even as your soul prospers. You are the one that's making the decision. Don't miss your moment. It only takes a moment. It only takes an event. If Brother Nelson Evanson had not called me six years ago, nearly seven years ago, I would have never been here. All the time I was fighting and screaming, I'm not going back to Carnesville. I'm not going back to Franklin County. You know, you only go in once. Amen. But he kept on calling. I could have missed my moment. Six years ago, I could have missed my moment. Listen to me. God sends moments. God sends events. God sends people. There have been certain things that have happened in my life. I did not understand them when they happened. It was devastating. It was heartbreaking. I was aggravated, confused, angry because of the event. But every time I got over it and repented because it did do something in my spirit that shouldn't I should not have been there to begin with. Every time I repented, I realized that God was doing it for my own good. He was sending an event in my life so that I would turn that loose. I can't receive what God is sending until I let go of what He's finished with. You hear what I'm saying? And some of us are crying about an event that took place 10 years ago. Get over it! It's gone! It's not coming back! Get off your pity pot singing, I shall not be moved, and you can't be moved with a keg of dynamite stand up and say this is the day that the Lord has made I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it and don't let the devil steal your glory amen somebody it only takes an act of obedience it only takes one act of obedience Peter said he's probably thinking what do you mean cast it on the right side I've been fishing here all night. Where you been? Where you been, Jesus? I've been out here all night long trying to catch fish, and now you show up in the daytime. Fish, you don't catch fish in the day with a net. They can swim around it. Anybody knows that. You're a preacher. Stick to what you do best. But I like Peter's attitude. He said, Lord, we... No, listen... We haven't fished all night. We have told. Nevertheless. Listen, if you ever get to the place in your walk with God and in your walk of faith, then no matter how many times you tried, you feel the Lord tell you one more time, if you can say, nevertheless, look out, your net's not going to catch everything God's going to put in it. Oh, praise God, that's good stuff. One act of obedience is all it takes. One exercise of faith is all it takes. And a moment of the miraculous happens. God allows in that moment something <clears throat> to transpire that changes everything forever. Everybody say, give me a moment. I'm serious. Everybody say, give me a moment. Now listen to me. <clears throat> Things happen for a reason. And with everything that is under the reason of God's timing, for everything that happens, there's a moment. If God is causing an event, if God is causing a moment 
if God is causing a person to come into your life to upset your general way of doing things, God's about to give you a moment. If you miss God's moment, life possibly will never change. I'm not saying that it won't. Did you know that it is rumored that real revival ever comes only once in every 25 years? Now, that's statistics, but I don't believe it. I believe revival comes when people get hungry for God. I believe there's always a moment in a person's life something triggers revival. I believe there's always a moment in a person's life when God does something to turn a marriage around. When God does something to turn our thoughts around, our attitude around, that we see God in the most powerful way than we've ever seen in life because all of a sudden, in just one fleeting moment, God makes visible His revelation to us and we're changed forever. They say most dreams only last a couple of minutes. But I have had dreams in my lifetime that has taken me all of my life to tell you about them. God can give you more. He can drop more in your spirit in just a moment because that moment means God is depositing perfect wisdom and understanding, intellect and revelation to that situation. And when you, when you come to yourself and regain your composure, that was God. You know it because you've learned how to listen for God's voice. Stand with me, please. Peter had a moment when he was in prison. While the church was praying, he was sleeping. He could sleep because the church was praying. He could rest in his flesh because someone else was interceding over spiritual warfare on his behalf. He was already stressed out. He was already wrung out with what was going on as a pastor of the New Testament church. He was absolutely spent. He needed that break. An angel had to shake him to wake him up. They literally, he had 16 soldiers. He was chained to two soldiers. And when the angel told him to get up, the chain dropped off of him. You talk about a moment. He probably thought, well, how are we going to get out of here? They literally passed through four different walls to get outside of that jailhouse. And then when they came to each door, each inner gate inside that city, the gate opened up on their behalf. When they came to the big gate that led into the city and the gates opened up, the angel said, go and preach all the words of this life. As soon as the angel left, Peter says, now I know. Give me a moment. A time when God chooses to step into your life calms your spirit, lets you know the devil doesn't have the final say. And it's not going to turn out the way the devil has planned it to turn out in your life because God is in control. He's got a leash on the devil and he's limited how far he can go and all that he can do to attack your life. God is giving us a moment at different intervals in our life when we come to the place that we try to know what to do and we simply do not know what to do, God will give you a moment. He'll send an event. He'll send a moment. He'll send a person. He'll send something in your life to let you know you're not going through what you're going through alone. But he is our help. David said, I will look to the hills from which cometh my help. My hope is in the Lord. How many need a moment? How many need a moment? Close your eyes and just give it to God. Listen to God's voice. Father, right now, I thank you. For those that are going to be watching this or watching this that's being streamed live right now, God, give them a moment. Some of them are watching and they're in desperation. For everyone, Lord, that's watching us on YouTube and on Facebook, give them a moment. God, give Sandy and Rodney a moment. Give Oliver, give, give his sister a, a moment. Sister Emma, give her a moment. God, I pray that you'll give Lamar Allen a moment. 
God, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you'll give Sam a moment. I pray, Lord, that you'll give Mike Jones a moment. All of those that are sick in their body, I pray, dear Lord, that you'll give Christy a moment. Give these people who are hung, hanging on in desperation. They've done everything the doctors told them to do. They've done everything that they know to do for themselves. But now they need a moment and help them, dear Lord, that they'll recognize their moment. If they miss their moment, send an angel into their hospital room. Send an angel to where they are right now and let them see the way and walk in it because that's the door. Dear God, I pray for everyone that has raised their hands and have their hands raised right now in this service. They're waiting for a moment. Come to their life. Your arm is not short that you can't save and your ear is not heavy that you cannot hear us when we cry out to you. Send us a moment. Send Word of Life Christian Center right here in Carnesville, Georgia. A moment. A breakthrough. A great growth. A, a time for souls to be saved and filled with the Spirit. A, a time, dear God, when we can pull up our stakes and stretch out our curtains and get ready for a great soul-saving revival. Send a revival of healing. Send a revival of, de uh, uh, of deliverance. Uh, God, I pray that you'll make this place a soul-saving station where wayfarers and strangers can walk in and find hope in the Lord. Give us a moment, oh God, because we're desperate and urgently anticipating your move in our lives. Uh, for it's not by might nor by power, but it's by your Spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Now praise Him with your own words. Praise Him with your own faith and out of your own mouth give God praise in this house this morning hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus praise your holy name hallelujah father go with us now as we leave this place go with us Lord with our moment expecting you to drop in expecting you to step into our lives give us a way Give us an answer. Give us a strength to endure. If it's not time for our moment, give us grace to stand in our time of struggle. May your power be manifested in our life to give us strength to continue in your work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Anybody need prayer before we go? Anybody need special prayer? Amen. God bless you. See you this evening at 6.30. Have a great evening.